Now, to summarize everything we just talked about, here are the different types of hyperlipoproteinemias. And we call this hyperlipidemias. Let's take a look at the one specifically that we just talked about and plugging in the pathology. Take your time here. Let's begin with type 1. In type 1, our discussion took us back where you consumed lipid from the mouth and went through the system and ended up at your liver, right? And as you went through that process and you emulsified, you formed a chylomicron, you got into your circulation, what was the name of that enzyme? And what was it HDL gave that nascent chylomicron? C2 and lipoprotein lipase. There you have it, please. Go back to take a look at the category and column molecular. And type 1, it's the fact that C2 and kappa lipoprotein lipase are completely deficient. If that's the case, what are you going to accumulate? Which lipoprotein? Good. Chylomicron. What are you going to increase in your patient? Triglycerides. What does that mean to you in terms of your patient? How are they going to present? What are, go- what are, they-, what are they going to put? Either in the stem of a question, um, either a report on your soap note, what have you. What are they going to put in terms of xanthomas, aren't they? Now, there are different types of xanthomas of lipid? Called xanthomas, are not there? Now, there are different types of xanthomas depending as to what kind of lipid is being accumulated. If it's triglyceride, it's called eruptive xanthoma. We'll talk about this later on. Next, let's talk about type 2. If it's type 2, in the discussion where it was a lipid being transported from the liver to the tissue, you take me through that quickly. You released what from your liver? L-I-V-E-R, liver, produces V-L-D-L. It is as simple as that. VLDL will never, I repeat, will never be produced in the enterocyte. Only from the liver, period. Next, that VLDL contains what? Triglycerides. That VLDL has to be formed into LDL, so that contains cholesterol to go where? To the tissue, to the target, right? What was the intermediate (laughs) that was present between VLDL and LDL? It's called IDL, right? All right, so... Eventually, you formed your cholesterol, you formed your LDL, and your LDL is going to the tissue. How does it go to the adrenal cortex? How does it go to the membrane? How does it go to the gonads? It goes or it is then accepted and engulfed with the help of LDL receptors. Is that important? Oh my goodness, yes. Really? Mm -hmm. A couple reasons. Management. Management of LDL. Well, maybe you can give a statin, perhaps. Is that effective? Maybe. You're on it for the rest of your life. You're worried about liver issues. Maybe the rare complication of rhabdomyolysis, right? You all know that from farm. Now, there is a new drug, which is definitely going to be asked because as far as all of the subjects, the one in which it advances the quickest and then shows up on licensing exams is pharmacology because effective, effective treatment, either adverse effects or mechanism of action and the outcome that it has on the patient. There's something called proprotein. Number two, convertase, subtilisin, connexin 9. What the heck is that? It's called PCK9 inhibitors. Now, these PC uh, protein, PCSK9 inhibitors is important because it actually works to decrease LDL cholesterol. And it usually works by LDL receptors. And this is something that you will take a look at in pharmacology, either through our lectures or... I, you will, I guarantee, once you hit the rotation of your hospital, of your residency, what have you. Now, how important is LDL receptors? Really important, is my point. So if LDL receptors aren't working properly and they're deficient, this is in general, I don't care if it's type 2A or 2B, both will have the predominant theme of LDL receptor deficiency. What are you going to start accumulating in your blood? LDL. What does LDL mean to you? Cholesterol. What might you then call this, please? Hypercholesterolemia. Now, what's the difference? All that you want to do here is take, take a look at 2B. 2B is the combination of LDL and VLDL accumulating in your circulation. You know that, you'll be in good shape. But the fundamental problem in type 2 is the fact that you're deficient of LDL receptors. Where? Most likely in the liver. Let's continue. When I have type 3, well, I want you to focus immediately. Go to molecular column. I want you to focus immediately on that capital E. And you have three horizontal lines. So type 3 is a problem with APOE. What does that mean to you? Is it a problem with lipoprotein lipase? No. It was a problem with your remnant being removed. 
Hence, it's sometimes called remnant removal disease. What's another name for this? Familial dysbeta lipoproteinemia. That must be clear. And then the last one that we will be discussing here will be type 4. We have to. Why? Because once again, obesity is a huge problem in the world, really. And whenever there's obesity, how well does your insulin work? It doesn't work. It doesn't work properly because you have insulin resistance. So let me walk you through this. First and foremost, VLDL is coming from where? It's coming from the liver, L-I-V-E-R, VLDL. What do you need so that you can form the VLDL or convert your VLDL into IDL? You require the help of your capillaproprotein lipase. Sure you do. So therefore, insulin works. If you remember your biochemistry, pay attention. Insulin, as long as it's working, normally works to then stimulate caprolipoprotein lipase so that you can then extrapolate some of that triglyceride from the VLDL. But in diabetes mellitus, at some point, what happens to insulin levels? It starts dropping, doesn't it? So if insulin is not there, then your caprolipoprotein lipase is not working properly. You're going to start accumulating VLDL, a secondary type of hypertriglyceridemia. Welcome to type 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, VLDL, 4. If you want, take a look at type 5. You do that on your own. You know these four, you'll be in great shape. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.